So let's do a practical application of brushes in Photoshop. Now we can use brushes to create interesting things, things to create drop shadows, but what I want to do is I want to show you how we can create an object, in this case like a drinking straw, with a highlight and a shadow and some stripes on it, but some tricks on how we can actually make this look realistic. So I've created a new document and the new document is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Don't make it a thousand inches. It will crash Photoshop. 300 pixels per inch, RGB mode, and then you can follow along with my same brush sizes to make this work. Choose a color from your color picker that you're going to want your straw to be. You're going to grab your brush, which B is the shortcut, and we want a basic round brush. And we want the hardness to be set at 100%. Remember, hold down your option or Alt and Control, and that's going to give you the preview of your brush. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush down to a 50 pixel brush using my left bracket. And in my layers panel, I want to create a new layer because all the items that we're going to be doing are going to be each individual one is going to be on its own layer. If you do this on the background layer, what I'm going to show you is not going to work. So in fact, just turn off your background layer completely. Okay, create a new layer and make sure that you have this labeled your straw. With your hard brush, opacity set to 100%, pixel, the size of the brush is 50. You've chosen a color, you're on your new blank layer. Click in one location, move your cursor to the other location where you'd like to finish your straw, and shift click. There's your straw. Yes, there's more to it than this. What I'd like to do is do a highlight and I'd like to do a shadow. I'm just going to turn the background back on so you can see this a little bit better. We turn the background off so you can actually see what, that you were on its own original layer. Now one of the things I noticed in here when I'm using my brush, I don't like that little caterpillar effect that's on there. And that comes because our spacing is a little bit too far apart. So go up into the options bar next to your drop down menu of your brush call up your brush settings panel and set your spacing and I'm going to zoom in so you can see that the spacing here is the issue. I'm going to take my caterpillar and I'm going to cut the spacing down to get rid of that little caterpillar effect right there. Okay, we're just going to make it 15% just to make it super easy. There we go. Okay, close out of that panel. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to actually undo this. In fact, I'm just going to select this layer and delete it. Okay, create a new layer again and put our straw on here. This is really important to make sure that everything you do is on its own unique layer. So there it is on my new layer. I'm going to click in one location, shift click in the other location, and I'm just gonna absolutely double check that it is on its own blank layer and not on the background. Now I'd like to go in and I'd like to add a highlight and a shadow to this. Now highlights are not white, shadows are not black, unless your objects are themselves black and white. Here with a straw you're going to have a darker color for the shadow and a lighter color of the straw for the shadow. So here's how you do it. First of all we're going to create a new layer up above our straw layer and this is going to be my shadow layer. Name it. Now because our last color that we used was this color in the color picker I'm going to click on the color picker and in order to go ahead and get a darker version of this color without sliding this all around my spectrum I'm going to set my hue, saturation, and brightness buttons to brightness. This allows me to take my original color and allows me to darken it. Okay. Now, shadows are going to be very dark. Okay. They're not going to be totally black, but they're going to be very dark version of whatever color that was. So this was my current color that I was using. This is my new color now, keeping it right in the same family, just setting the brightness, or in this case, the darkness. Now I want to soften my brush, so go and hold down Option or Alt and Control. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the hardness to zero by sliding my cursor up. Now I'm going to get a totally soft brush. Okay, let me undo that. Now because we're on its own layer right here all by itself, I'm going to park my cursor up here and I'm going to click right here. And then I'm going to hold down my Shift key and I'm going to Shift click down here. There's my shadow, and it's on its own layer. It looks really weird that the shadow would be hanging off the edge of this straw right here, 
but don't worry about it. We're going to fix this. Next, we're going to create a new layer up above this one. I'm going to name it, and this is going to be my highlight layer. And I'm going to turn off my shadow layer, click back on the straw layer. Because I'm still on my brush tool, I can hold down my Option or Alt key. And by holding down the Option or Alt, that's going to give me my color picker. I'm going to sample the original color of the straw. Go back to my highlight layer. Go over to my color picker. And now I'd like to create a lighter version of this color. Now, shadows are going to be very dark. Highlights are going to be very light. And I didn't have much room to move this up from my original color. And I'm out of room in the brightness. So I'm going to go to my saturation. And I'm going to make this substantially lighter. This was my current color down here. This is my new color that I've just chosen for my highlight. And now I'm going to click OK. The last setting of my uh, cursor was left the same because we just did the shadow. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with my shadow layer, but on the highlight layer. New highlight layer selected. I'm going to bring my brush cursor up here and click up here. Hold down my shift key and click down here. Now I'm going to go back in and turn on my shadow and my highlight layers. Now I know this looks absolutely terrible, okay? Because the shadows and the highlights should be all around my entire straw. Shadows on one side, highlights on the other, okay? So here's one way that I could do this. Unfortunately, this is destructive, but I'm going to show you this anyway, and then we're going to do it the non-destructive way. I'm going to turn off both my highlight and shadow layers by doing my poke and swipe over those eyeballs. On the straw layer, I would like to go ahead, and when I do my shadow, I'd like my shadow to stay within the straw layer. Okay, so here's what I could do. I could put a selection around my straw. Because this is on its own blank layer, I could command or control click and see what happens when you put your cursor over the thumbnail of that layer. When you hold down your command or control key, you'll get your little uh, selection icon. If you command or control click on that layer, you'll notice that the selections are around the straw. I'm going to go under my select menu and I'm going to inverse that selection. Okay, So I'm going to get everything but the straw. Now what I have here is I have everything but the straw active. If I go to my shadow layer, I select the shadow layer and I click on the shadow layer, my selection is active all around the straw. Okay. Now with my shadow layer and my selection active all around the straw but not active inside the straw and the shadow layer selected, I could hit delete. And then you could see that it's going to delete everything that's outside the straw. With that same selection, I could go to my highlight layer, select it, and turn it on. And again, the selection has stayed exactly the same. No new selection. It's selecting everything but the straw, and I could hit delete, which gives me my highlights and my shadows. What I don't like about this is that if I try to move my highlights or shadows, I have to repeat this entire process. I don't want to do that. So I am going to back up in history, doing my command Z several times and backing up in history. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something completely different. And this requires everything being on its own transparent layer. We are going to do the non-destructive version of getting rid of what we don't want. But we're not going to actually get rid of it. We're going to hide it. Mask it. Clip it. Okay? Here's what we do. Here is my straw on its own transparent layer. Now, the way we were able to select these pixels by command or control clicking on that layer is it's just selecting all the pixels that are there on that layer. There's no other pixels on that layer, which is why it could select everything. So what I want to talk about is clipping an image to another image. And this is what's called a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is really quite ingenious because it's using the actual picture of, in this case, the straw, as the window. And it seems kind of counterintuitive that, you know, our window would be the straw, but here's how it works. When you do a clipping mask, what we're doing is we're using only the pixels that are on the straw-based layer to basically show the shadow layer. And how you do this is you put your cursor in between the two layers that you'd like to clip hold down your Option or your Alt key, and Option or Alt click. 
this shadow image will only appear where there are pixels on the straw based layer. The shadow is clipped to the straw. If I go back to my move tool and I click on my shadow layer, you'll see that I can move my shadow all around inside here and it stays within the straw. So my shadow is clipped to my straw. Now I can't go in and clip something to the shadow. I can only clip one or several things to the straw itself. I can't clip something to the straw and then something to the shadow here. So I'm going to do the same thing with a highlight layer. Again, I'm going to go in. If I hold down my Option or my Alt key and I Option click here, it looks like I'm clipping this to the shadow, but I'm not. Any subsequent clips that I put on top of here will set in and they're always clipping to the straw here. If that straw layer is not visible, neither are the clipped assets. Now, the reason why we do this is because I may want to go into my highlight layer and move this around and move it up, move it down using my shadow layer. And I can also move that up and move that down and see they're not totally rotated. I could use my command T for transform and I could rotate that to get that shadow where I'd like it to be. Okay. Now, the other thing is non-destructive Photoshopping. Because my shadow and my highlight layers are on their own layers, I can adjust the opacity of these separately to get the right look and feel. But the right look and feel is also going to come from what we call blending modes. And with my shadow layer, in order to make the shadow look realistic, we need to set the blending mode to multiply. Multiply will take this shadow layer and instead of having it look kind of like this hazy fog sitting on top, it actually will multiply or blend it in to our image. Now with our highlight layer, same thing. But this is a different scenario because we are dealing with a dark shadow. Now we're dealing with a light highlight. So we're going to go and we're going to use screen. You'll notice that we did our shadow under the darken section, all of these darken, which is why we did our shadow with multiply. And because our highlight is light, we are going to go in and use screen. So what exactly does this do? Well, anything that's light is going to go ahead and it's going to allow us to have some of the color showing through from the background, the straw area, and it doesn't just like sit on top. Okay. So whenever you do a highlight or a shadow, always go in and make sure you set your blending modes so they work. And now I could go into my layers and I could click on my shadow layer and I could adjust my opacity here and my highlight as well to get that just looking right with that straw. Okay. Now I'd like to add some stripes to this. So I'm going to create a new layer up above and I'm going to call this my stripes. Now I'm going to pick a new color here in my color picker and I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to right click and I'm choose my brush, hard round brush right there. And I'm going to make sure that my brush is small. So I'm going to use my left bracket to reduce it down in size. And I can pick the size that I'd want to make my stripes. Now I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to paint a stripe right across here. And I want that a little bit straighter. So I'm going to turn my smoothing up to 100. And I'm then going to paint my stripe across there. Remember, smoothing draws it slower, but it's also going to give us more of a straight line and not perfectly straight, horizontal or vertical, but a straight line in the direction that we're drawing. Now these stripes may not be totally perfectly spaced and that's fine. But now what I'd like to do is I'd like to clip these stripes to my straw as well so they don't hang over the edge. I'm not going to go in and try to erase them. I'm going to clip them to it. Again, I can clip as many things as I want to to one layer. The stripes will not be clipped to highlight. They will all be clipped to the straw. Again, put your cursor in between the two layers, Option or Alt click, and the stripes show up here. Now it doesn't look right at all because the stripes are on top of my highlights and my shadows. So in the layers panel, I'm going to drag that down so that it now shows underneath my shadow and my highlight. Now I want to show you what this blending mode actually does to the shadow. I'm going to take my shadow and I'm going to set this back to normal. And do you notice how that shadow just kind of looks like it's this hazy kind of blue over the top of it and it just kind of looks smoggy? 
But when we take that shadow layer and we multiply that, do you see how it now looks like a shadow? Let's try that with a highlight as well. Set the highlight back to normal, and it just looks like it's some kind of like bright, glossy thing. But when I set that to screen, it now looks more like a highlight. And there we have this kind of striped straw kind of looking object, all by using clipping masks right here. Now you're probably saying, well, it doesn't look like a straw because there isn't an opening. Fine. Do a new layer. This is going to be your opening of our straw. And I'm going to make it a very dark color. I'm going to pick my straw color. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to darken that by using my brightness slider and make that very dark. Now in my opening layer, I'm going to have my brush and I'm going to click. I'm going to get a circle. And from that little opening right there, I'm going to take that circle. I'm going to use my Command T for transform. And I'm going to flatten it out. And then I'm going to rotate it afterwards. Trust me, you want to flatten it out first and then rotate it. Okay. And I'm going to park that right up there on the top of my straw. Okay. Now, it doesn't look like it's actually perfect, perfect with the straw right there. So I'm going to go and do my Command T for transform. I'm going to zoom in close. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go in and I'm going to warp this a little bit. And with the warp I can go in and I can pull this up so I kind of match the angle of the opening of the straw there to make it look like it's got a little bit more curve to the straw as well. And it looks a little half-baked right there. But let me just move this down a little bit there. I'm going to do my Command T for transform again. I'm going to warp that a little bit more. And actually, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to split the warp crosswise, and I'm going to land a set of little pointers in there. Now, this is really small, so I'll zoom in even bigger so you can see this. But now with my warp here, now I can go in and I can warp this any direction that I want just by pulling those handles and those points and kind of cleaning that up a little bit to get my straw opening in there. Not quite absolutely perfect, but yeah, getting close. Command T for transform, rotate that a little bit. Rotate that a little bit more, move that down, and we get that opening there a little bit. And I could actually go in here to my straw layer as well, and just use my eraser tool as well. I'm going to grab my eraser tool, which is the letter E right click and I'm going to choose a hard round brush that needs to be a lot smaller than this and I'm just going to erase a little bit of that straw around there to make it look like it matches the opening now here's the great part folks with my highlight and my shadow clipped to that guess what I don't have to worry about erasing the highlight and the shadow because it's only going to show up where it's showing up on that straw okay pretty awesome now, if you really want to go crazy with this, check this out. With this area here, I'm going to go back into my original color. I'm going to lighten it here. And you know if the highlight's coming from here, we'd have a highlight in the straw here. So I'm going to create a new layer up above this, which is going to be my inside highlight. Okay? So, didn't spell it right. I'm going to use a soft cursor. Make sure you soften that cursor. And I'm going to put a little highlight right in here, coming right through this. And to make sure I use my brush and not my eraser, which is on my eraser tool. That doesn't help, does it? No, it does not. I'm going to soften this, and I've got my lighter color on my inside, and I'm going to paint over this right here. Okay? Now, I don't want this inside highlight to go around the edge. I want to clip it directly to the opening here. And now, if I set this to screen and cut back the opacity, this gives me kind of a highlight inside the straw. Because each and every one of these items is on its own layer, I can go back to my little highlight, select my move tool, and I can move that around, and it looks like it's staying inside the window. Let's zoom back out here using Command-0. Let's throw that background back on. Wow, nice straw.